What's up everyone, this is Emilio and today I'm gonna to be doing a walkthrough of a vacant house in Detroit. Um, I got an off-market lead so I was coming here to do a walkthrough and then I figured, you know what, let me uh, turn the camera on, do a walkthrough of this video and pretty much talk about my process and what I see, how I evaluate the property, take a look at the uh, the neighborhood and things like that and um, you know, just take me, uh, take you along this journey of looking at investing in the city of Detroit. Uh, so here we are. Uh, it is a two unit brick multifamily. So there's a unit down here and then a second unit upstairs. I can tell it's a two unit too because the address blocks, It's uh, there's two different address blocks right there. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, this is my first time walking through this place. Uh, I haven't seen it, I'm uh, so I'm just gonna, whatever I see is gonna be the first time seeing it. Uh, if you like this content, subscribe to the channel, comment below. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, talk to me about investing in Detroit and how I could help you, there's a link in the description below. Just click on my link tree link. Um, and then if you want to support the channel, um, you could check out my Detroit real estate investing course. That's also a link in the description below. So I'm going to turn this camera around and let's take a look. All right. So uh, before I go on in the inside, I got the front door open. Uh, I usually take a look at the exterior. I try and take a look at the the, the block too. Uh, block looks all right. This is a nice house right here. They got flowers and stuff like that. Very clean. There's a vacant house across the street. Again, new house. Uh, not new house. Sorry, house right here. It's got new stain on the decking. Um, and again, looks clean. A lot of times, <laughs> a lot of the times, I just look to see if they like they clean up any trash on the yard and uh, flowers, flowers in the garden and. All that kind of stuff so um yeah so this street's all right i like this street i like the trees in the street I, I know that for sure um so looking at this brick i could tell a lot of these windows these windows will probably have to be replaced if you're going to rent it you know there's no point if you're going to renovate the whole house there's no point of salvaging these old windows so uh, a lot of the times you know let's do a window count four in the bottom four on the top that's eight um you notice to these this will have to be torn apart or put and put back together I don't know if you could tell you see it's like shifting it's like shifting this way even here too. this pillar right here all the bricks are buckling out so you're gonna need some masonry work right here this wall is bowing out um, so yeah even down here I'm not sure if the camera will get it it doesn't really get like bowing out well on camera but it's bowed out here but you can see these cracks here All right, so all this had a lot of masonry work. All this has to be replaced. Gutters look okay. I can see some separation up there. Maybe they just need to be tuned up a bit. Maybe you want to try and keep them, but it looks like the gutters are okay. Save yourself some money doing that. All the brick looks all right. These security gates, they're a little old, but they'll work. You could uh, just paint these instead of having to replace them. These are like the really good ones too. Like the newer ones you buy at Home Depot, the cheap ones, like you, the people could bend the, these, uh, those, and these ones are like really nice and solid doors. I would keep these doors. Um, but all these windows here, all these have to be replaced. So at 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 on this side. So 18 windows. Let's go back here. Not much of a, there's no garage, and there is no backyard here either. Yeah, there's no backyard here. There's like a pad here, maybe you could use it for like a garage or something like that. There's nothing back here. I wonder how, I wonder if this lot goes, this, I think this might be an alleyway actually. Yeah, there's no backyard. And this is all covered, I can't even see the house. What are we at, 18? Uh, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 24 windows so far. Probably nine on the other side, so let's say, 33 windows altogether. This all has to be replaced. This is gonna be a full on renovation. So if you're renovating this property, the first thing to do would be a demo and a clean out. I would cut all these trees out, clear the whole thing out so you can see the house. And then, um, yeah, there's no salvage. I don't think there's no salvage in this. You gotta have to rebuild all that up, that back deck. These are the original windows. You could, I mean, they got these screens on here, which is keeps, you know, intruders out. You could replace them with glass block if you want to. Yeah, all of here, 
so another thing too is the gutter when the water comes down a lot of the times like the water if you'll see this the water will run down the, the uh, wall and it'll road away the the mortar and the masonry and all that kind of stuff so you see all this separation of the bricks down here too it's pretty bad right here by the water spout so again a lot more masonry work right here All these steps have to be replaced. Big old break right there. They tried repairing this with like a concrete, um, concrete material. This whole front porch is actually sunk in. You can't tell on camera, but it's 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 dipping down this way. So I would probably say this whole whole porch has to be broken up and re-poured. Very expensive. Very expensive. All right, let's go take a look. Let me turn this light on real quick. Okay. All right, so there's gonna be two units. This is the first unit here. There is no door here, but the first unit there would be a door. So lower unit here. So it's a boiler. boilers it's a way to heat the house the problem is is it's a really good um, source of heat but boilers are expensive to fix and a lot of people um, since more people are going the forced air furnace route uh, boilers are getting more expensive to um, repair just because people have to specialize in it um, you see all this coming off the plaster ceiling you're gonna have to skim that or you could knock out this whole thing and just put new drywall up on here these are plaster walls and you could you could there's two ways you go about it you could either demo all these walls which would be extremely expensive and get it down to the studs um, the big the the thing that's good about that is once you get it down to the studs so uh, break up the plaster and then underneath the plaster there's like these wood slats that go across the lath and then you got to take the lath off and then get it down to the studs and it's extremely expensive because plaster is heavy. You're going to need a lot of dumpsters. It's a lot of work because you got to get all the nails out of the walls. But it makes, if you're flipping a house, it makes it a lot easier to replace the mechanicals because the walls are open. So if you need to replace the electrical, if you want to, um, a lot of people convert boilers. So what, the way a boiler works is there's no ducts in this house. It's hot. These, um, the hot water travels through insulated pipes throughout the house. So there's no vents. So if you want to convert it to a forced air, you have to reduct this whole house, which is costly and it's a pain. So a lot of the times what you could do is you could, once you get this down to the studs, the walls are open. So it's really easy to replace the electrical, the plumbing and the HVAC. But again, it, it's a lot of money. Um, probably not worth it if you're gonna keep it as a rental because you're gonna spend so much money on the rehab and the purchase of the house you get cash flow back but how much money did you spend in the renovation uh kitchen see uh, there's an example of the wood slats so you, if you're trying to get this house down to the studs you gotta knock the plaster out and then you gotta take the slats out and the slats are nailed into place so there's always nails in the two by four so then you gotta go around with a uh with a crowbar or a hammer and slowly take out each nail um all of these cabinets you're gonna need a brand new kitchen you need brand new flooring. Um, replace all the doors. Ooh. Yeah. These these floors are shot. Floors are shot. You have to get vinyl flooring throughout this whole thing. You need a new bathroom. Here's an example. So plaster, lath. And then to get it down to the studs. You can see right there, that's how you let me just put the, this on the pole real quick so you can go up higher. You see how the nails, there's all these nails stuck in the 2x4. So you're gonna to put the drywall down, you need a smooth surface, so you gotta take all that out. Um, also with the plumbing, you know, there's PVs, there's PEX here. That mean they kind of weave this PEX in and out, but look at the plumbing. All this plumbing, if you're renovating this property, you gotta you should just replace this anyways. 
I mean, look, that's all rusted. What's going to happen is if you don't replace it um, and you drywall up the ceiling, and then eventually there's going to be a leak because this stuff is so old, um, and then you're going to ruin your drywall ceiling, and then you got to replace it anyway. So you might as well replace everything new. Just gut this whole bathroom out. So bedroom one. And these are some, and these are big windows too. Yeah, these are big windows. These windows would be like 350. Ooh, this floor's buckled right here. Almost tripped. So the way I look at rehabs is, rehabs are on a spectrum, right? So every rehab is different. Some people want to not replace the windows. Some people say replace the windows. Some people will say, you know, I want a new roof. Some be like, that'll get by. So, you know, it's, it, it depends on what you want to do to the house. But normally I break up rehabs into three kind of renovations. Um, this is a uh, bedroom three. Um, you have minor cosmetic, average renovation and a full on gut renovation. So, um, with your minor cosmetic, you are looking at like 20 to $30 a square foot. Minor cosmetic is just paint, carpet, kitchen's fine, bathroom's fine, leave it alone, just paint everything. And then, you know, maybe do some fine touches here and there, but nothing uh, major. With the average renovation, you're looking at paint, carpet, um, replace the kitchen, and replace the bathroom, like totally renovated. Um, those run about, Thirty to forty-five dollars a square foot. Oh, there was a fire in here. Look at that. There was a fire. Thirty to forty-five dollars a square foot. Again, depending on what you want to do. Do you want to put for mica countertops in granite countertops? Do you want to just re-salvage the cabinets and paint them, or do you want to just gut it and put in all new cabinets? And then you have the full-on renovation, which this looks like it will be. Um, full on renovation will go like $50 plus. So it could get up to like $70, $80 a square foot again, depending on what you want to do. Can this, does this door even open? I don't even think it could step out on there. That looks very dangerous. Yeah, so there was a fire. So with this, I don't do fire damage. Ooh, this is beautiful. See, look at the ceiling. Beautiful. It's such a shame. Here's all right. I would do vinyl flooring. This is uh, the original flooring. Instead of re, if you're gonna keep it as a rental, honestly, just there's no point of actually even refin. <laughs> to me, anyways, just get in vinyl flooring. It's scratch resistant, water resistant. Oh, they they put new windows in here. So are they trying to renovate this place? Why would you put new windows here? Unless they got in trouble with the city. New kitchen, you're gonna need a new kitchen. And again, I don't do fire damage, so I don't know how this works. The, is, this stuff, you can't, you can't simply just scrape and paint it. I think you gotta demo all this. So that means you got to demo it, clean it out. You're gonna have to get drywall insulation. Oof, look at this. Looks like a painting. <laughs> This is gonna be at least uh, what 125, 135 thousand renovation. I'll tell you that much right now. Part the price of the property is 45. So 125. Well, you're at one. My math is off here. 170. You're at 170. Now, was it worth it? Just depends. How much can you rent it for? You know. You're gonna have to get the rent in, you have to pay the taxes, insurance, and then you get cash flow every month. And then you find out what you make annually and then you divide that by your investment of whatever this is gonna be purchase, purchase and renovation, let's say 170. So you gotta take your annual net income and divide it by 170,000. 
And then if you're trying to do the burr, you're trying to refinance it, you gotta see what this house appraises for. I don't even know the value of this house. I actually, um, I knew I, I, it was, I was in the neighborhood, someone told me about it. So I was like, you know what, let me come on over here. But I don't think the two units in this area are valued at 170. I gotta pull comps. Let's go down to the basement. I gotta pull comps, but I gotta see. So in the basement, I look for um, evidence of water, which I see. And all this water is here because of the front porch. All the bricks are separated, so whenever it rains, ah, oh, dang it, I got a whole bunch of soot down my shoe. Oh, dang, that sucks. Um, all the water comes down the the porch, hits the porch, and then comes down to the basement. That's what all this water's from. Uh, this is the boiler pipes. I told you that the water goes through the house through insulated hot water pipes. Oh, hot water goes through insulated pipes, fills up the radiator, and then it fills up the room with with hot it warms the air in the room and then here's your boiler this is not salvageable I think shot man this little boiler heated the whole unit I wonder if there's a boiler on this side it'd probably be best to convert this um, property to a um, uh, to a forest air furnace so I come out here I try and look for evidence of water and then I look for bowing walls bowing walls is not good but these will all look to be straight. Just the brick. The bricks are all kind of coming apart down here, but walls are straight. I would gut everything down here and paint the ceiling black, walls white, floors gray. And that's it. There's no shared, this is not a shared, huh. That's really interesting. Let me go down here. Usually it's a shared basement. So each unit, each unit has their own basement and access to the basement. Oh wait, nope, here you go. Okay, so this is the access for the other unit, I believe. Um, man, I think this is actually one, one heating source. So with a two unit, it's nice to have two meters for the electric and two meters for the gas that way the tenants are responsible the issue is is that if you have places that have one gas meter it's very difficult to determine which you you what unit should pay what because some people maybe run the heat all the time and the person other person doesn't or maybe with the water um, and you have one water tank to 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 supply the whole both units and the problem is, is who uses more water? It's tough to determine. So a lot of the times the, the landlord pays for that stuff separately and just includes it in the rent. So I think it's best to actually uh, have um, two furnaces and two water heaters. That's always the best practice. All right, I wanna thank everybody for watching this video. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Again, please comment on the video, subscribe to the channel, reach out to me if you have questions. Um, I don't charge anything right now, I'm a, I'm a small channel, so I will talk to anybody who wants to talk to me about investing in Detroit, give you tips and tri uh, tips, tricks, my opinion on stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, this property is gonna need a lot of renovation. I'm gonna see what properties are selling for in the area. So if houses in this area are selling for only 150,000, really doesn't make sense. It's gonna cost 100, let's say 125,000, 135,000 to renovate this property. I don't, let's see, I don't even know how big this place is. Actually, before I go, let me bust out my calculator. So this place is probably what, 2,100 square feet. Let's say 60 a square foot. That's 126,000 for 60 bucks a square foot. Uh, and then you gotta purchase it for 45. So uh, yeah, you're in it for 170. I don't know. Again, if, if the houses here are selling for like 350, you know, maybe, or you could convert this to a single family, make it one big single family and then flip it. You could do that as well. That's, a, that's also an option. Anyways, um, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you soon.